Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for being here uh, this afternoon. Let me uh, acknowledge my colleagues who are here with me today. Uh, I'll make some opening remarks, and then I'll turn it over to Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins. Uh, and I want to congratulate her on uh, getting the state budget done. It was a hard budget. A lot going on in the world, a lot going on in the country, in the state, uh, between the COVID situation and federal relief. Uh, but it's really a good piece of work, and I want to congratulate her. Uh, same to Assemblyman uh, Nader Sayedj, who uh, obviously the Senate and the Assembly passed the budget. Uh, Speaker Carl Heasty is the head of the Assembly. I want to congratulate them. Uh, Assemblyman Sayedj also has the distinction of being the first Jordanian American who's ever served in the State Assembly. Uh, so good for him as a pioneer. Westchester County George Latimer, who's a partner of ours on the state and has done an extraordinary job. Uh, and Mayor of Yonkers, Mike Spano, who's hosting us today. Uh, the mayor uh, has always been a great partner, and Yonkers should be very proud. And I understand from a little birdie that uh, the mayor is going to be 21 years old again tomorrow. So. Congratulations to you on 21 plus. Uh, to, to Sergeant Archana Chang, who is the site commander for the uh, Yonkers mass vaccination site and the entire team. They are about to do their 50 uh, shot number 50,000 today. So let's give the National Guard and everybody who's running this a big round of applause. Congratulations, guys. The National Guard has been fantastic. They really have stepped up all across the state. Uh, before I begin my remarks today, I'd like to comment on uh, what happened last night and uh, the justice that was done in the George Floyd decision. I hope it brings some peace to the family. I hope it brings some peace to people, demonstrators all across this country, people who are concerned all across this country. Uh, but at the same time, let's remember the context, right? The George Floyd killing was not just about George Floyd. This has uh, been a long line of uh, systemic injustices in the justice system, which has made it even more repugnant. Uh, you can go back to Rodney King, you can go to Amadou Diallo, you can go to Sean Belge, you can go to Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, then George Floyd. And then after the George Floyd killing, DeWante Wright, Adam Toledo. We don't need an episodic solution because this is not an episodic problem, it is a systemic problem. And we need to attack this issue both from the top down and the bottom up. The national government should step in. President Biden spoke about it in the campaign. We need public safety reform in this country. You can't police the way you did decades ago. It's a different society. Things change, things evolve. We don't educate the way we educated decades ago. We don't, no system has been static. And we need to undertake the real reforms in our public safety system, nationwide, and bottom up. Why? Because policing is done community by community. Policing in Yonkers is different than policing in Mount Vernon, is different than policing in, in New York City, is different than policing in Buffalo. Let those communities design the public safety reform system that they want that they need, that they believe is responsive to their community's needs. New York State is the first state in the nation that started that public safety reform, mandating that communities come up with a reform plan uh, in light of uh, the George Floyd killing. But it's just the start. If communities need laws changed from the state, tell us but otherwise, community by community, let's reform public safety and understand that uh, peace was done, justice was done with George Floyd. But until we change the system, there will be another and another and another. 
Today we're at the Yonkers Mass Vaccination Site, which has done a really fantastic job. Uh, the mass vaccination sites are the most effective vaccination sites in the state of New York in terms of numbers that are just produced. Uh, as I mentioned before, the National Guard does a fantastic job. I want to thank Mayor Spano personally for his help and his administration's help in making this site work. 50,000 vaccinations, just think about that. Uh, it's an extraordinary accomplishment. The COVID numbers show that we are still making progress. Uh, all the numbers are headed in the right direction. COVID yesterday statewide was 2.14%. That's the lowest level since November 5th, which is a very big deal. That means we're back to where we were in early November before Thanksgiving, before the whole holiday surge. So that's really good news. Uh, but as good as the news is, we still had 53 people die yesterday. Uh, and those are 53 families that are grieving today, and they're in our thoughts and prayers. 817 people in ICU, 505 intubated. When you look across the state, you see different COVID positivity rates, which are dramatically different, which makes the point again, this is up to your community and how your community behaves. Highest positivity rate in the state of New York is Western New York, 4.4%. Mid-Hudson, 3%. Finger Lakes, 3%. Long Island, 2.9%. New York City, 2.8%. Capital Region, 2%. Mohawk Valley, 1.6%. North Country, 1.4%. Central New York, 1.4%. Southern Tier, 08 Statewide, 26 But ask yourself, uh, why is Western New York at 44 and the capital region, Albany District, is at two. Why is Western New York double what the Albany area is? It's a function of the human behavior in that area. We control the positivity rate. Nobody else. The seven-day statewide average is 2.6%. That's the lowest since November 11th. Here in Westchester County, the seven-day average 2.6, which is the lowest rate since November 6th. Uh, that is a great piece of news, and I want to congratulate the County Executive, uh, County Executive Latimer. You have done a fantastic job. 16 vaccination sites in Westchester, and he has constantly, constantly been getting out the message. Let's give the County Executive a round of applause. It has been a long, horrendous year with COVID. We've all suffered the pain, uh, but spring is here. The sun is out. Spring is a season of renewal. Uh, some of us just celebrated Easter, spring of renewal, rebirth. And that's where New York is. We're poised for rebirth. And our goal in, in New York is not just to awake from the COVID winter, but to rise ever stronger in this new spring. That is what New York does. You can knock us down, but we get up and we get up stronger. We went through 9-11. We got knocked down, but we got up and we got up stronger. We went through Hurricane Superstorm Sandy. You knocked us down, but we got up and we got stronger. And we have to do the same thing with COVID. We're not just going to rebuild, we're going to rebuild better than ever before. And we have the agenda to do it. We're going to be the green energy capital of the nation, period. We have universal broadband access that no other state has in the United States. We're going to have more affordable housing than ever before. We're going to reform our health care system, learning from what we learned in COVID and the pandemic. So New York will be better on the rebirth if we make it better. And the key to getting to rebirth is the vaccinations. Now, yes, we have vaccines. Yes, I just gave you numbers that say we're headed in the right direction with COVID. But don't get cocky with COVID. There are variants of interest. 
We've seen places around the world, we see states in this country where the number went down and then it spiked and it went right back up. The only way to address and defeat COVID and crush COVID is to get the vaccination. We have to reach herd immunity. And that is important and I can't say it enough and we can't do enough and it takes all of us but it also takes people to come forward and take the vaccine. It is safe. 12 million doses just in the state of New York. It's being administered around the world. It is safe. Everybody is eligible. There are no excuses now not to get the vaccine. And today we're taking even an additional step where for people who are over 60 years old, of age, you don't even need an appointment to get a vaccine. You can just walk in to any of the mass vaccination sites across the state and walk in and they will give you the vaccine. You don't have to go on the internet, you don't have to make a phone call, you don't have to do anything. Just show up at the vaccination site if you're 60 plus and they will give you a vaccine. Why 60 plus? because the older you are, the more susceptible you are to harm from the virus. So, for people over 60 years old, uh, I'm one of them, really no excuses. Just show up and that starts this Friday. But at the end of the day, government can only do what government can do. Uh, we can set up the vaccination sites, the National Guard can be heroic. All the health officials can do their job. The mayor can do his job. The county executive can do his job. The Senate majority leader can do her job. But it's up to you to come and get the vaccine. Last point. People talk about the vaccine and, well, this is a decision I have to make for myself. Yes. It's a decision you have to make for yourself. It's safe, it's smart for you. I believe that in every medical professional, or most 99% of the medical professionals in this country will tell you the same thing. But think about this, it's not really just about you, right? You are a member of a community. It's a great word from the Latin communitas of the common. You are part of a community. And if you get sick, you can make somebody else sick. So yes, it's about you, but you don't live on an island unto yourself. You live in an apartment, you live in a house, you go to a store, you get on a bus, you get on a train. You affect other people. You are part of the community. And I believe there's a civic duty for you as part of that community to do the responsible thing. Community, communitas. My father said it more simply, God rest his soul. He used to talk about New York as a family, the family of New York. You're a member of the family. This is one extended family of New York. And your behavior will affect the family. If you don't get vaccinated, even if you're young and you're a superhero and you're not worried, you could give it to someone and it could kill them. So yes, it's your decision, but you are part of a community. You are part of the New York family, and you have an obligation and responsibility one to another. Let's honor that responsibility. With that, let me turn it over to the Senate Majority Leader again. Congratulations on getting the budget done. Uh, we've been through many of them. This is probably the most complicated and most difficult budget, but it's probably the budget that also does the most for New York in terms of reform and good work, which will allow us to rebound post-COVID higher than ever before. And I want to thank the Senate Majority Leader uh, and uh, the New York State Assembly for all their good work in getting it done. Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins. Thank you. Thank you so much, Governor. Uh, the, and thank you also for talking about the work that we did on uh, this budget because uh, it really 
I think is extraordinary because it is a people-centered budget. We saw what happened over this past year, which was incredibly devastating in so many ways. Our condolences go out to so many who have lost people due to COVID. Uh, but we saw it as an opportunity to uh, look at where we could be, uh, pay up some of our past debts, and really put people at the center of not only our recoverance, our recovery, but our resurgence. So it was, uh, an, uh, I, I know, I've been told that it's uh, probably one of the best budgets that, that has happened, and I'm certainly, uh, you know, proud of it, and I think uh, all of us uh, have something to look forward to. But we're here uh, because of I think what the governor said. Uh, the, at the center of all of us uh, is making sure we have our health, uh, because without health, you know, everything else, frankly, is, is secondary. So to be at this site in Yonkers, in the community I represent, just, uh, you know, a few blocks from my office and, and my home to say that right now we are opening up to 60 plus a walk-in option to come and get the vaccine that I've already gotten and I believe every one of us have gotten because it matters. You'll hear from all of my colleagues in government, all of us who are fighting for this site because 10701, among other zip codes, so hard hit. And the fact that it's a, you know, that, that FEMA heard our collective uh, 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 cries and the numbers show that we knew exactly what to do once this site got here and we got to work and did it. And I think within the first week, it was just our zip codes, Mount Vernon and Yonkers zip codes that were hard to hit, that were able to get the first round of shots the first week. And 12,000 shots happened just at the very beginning. Right now, there are 22,000 who are, are completely vaccinated. And, uh, you know, as the governor said, we'll be hitting 50,000 shots today. But still, we still are lagging. We still have more to do. And I'm glad that it's spring. I'm glad that people can, can in many ways, walk to this site. I'm glad that the, the mayor uh, and, and the, uh, the, the council, uh, my colleague, Assemblyman Sage, and of course the county executive, and the governor will continue to push the importance of getting the vaccine so that we can all enjoy, uh, yes, our people-centered budget, but the recovery and really the resurgence of, of New York. And just, just um, as it relates to the, to the George Floyd uh, verdict, they said, I, I was so happy uh, what, that they got the right answer. But we also know that uh, true justice is, would have been that uh, George Floyd would still be here. So we have so much work to do, but we are prepared. We've been leaders in terms of, of reforms, police reforms, and I think we will continue to do so until justice is, is really uh, what we do. And criminal justice is really justice for all. So again, get vaccinated, roll up your sleeves. We'll be right here to, to help you through it and it'll be good for you and good for your families. So thank you. Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Worcester County Executive. And uh, we want to thank the governor and his team for terrific leadership. Uh, that has helped us in local government in our area, both the mayor and myself as local government officials, in being able to deal with this pandemic in a real-world context. The, uh, the site located at uh, the county center, it's a county facility, we turned it over to the state, and with their leadership and their organization, they turned it into a site where over 2,000 people a day are getting vaccinated, seven days a week, 11 hours a day, and that has really contributed tremendously to the amount of people in Westchester and in our neighboring counties uh, in the Hudson Valley to be able to get that vaccination. And uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to the state and the leadership to make that happen. This facility here in Yonkers, we're very excited to know 
that now anybody 60 and older can walk up and get a shot very easily. And, and at least that deals with one of the many reasons why we have some uh, vaccine hesitancy, which is the convenience factor. We know that a lot of folks are not always comfortable going on a computer, having those, uh, those skills necessary to know how to get an appointment. And in the early stages of this, when appointments were hard to get, it discouraged people. But this announcement now, and of course I see all across this large state of ours, similar centers available, we think this is going to help dramatically. I know the mayor will talk about it more specifically since it's here in his backyard. Uh, I too want to join the voices and appreciation for our members of the National Guard. The work that they've done. The work that these men and women have done have been really exemplary. And, uh, and if we go back to the beginning of the pandemic in March of a year ago, the first concentration of documented cases came here in Westchester County. And it was at that time that members of the National Guard were deployed by the governor to help uh, our colleague and friend, Mayor Bramson of New Rochelle, deal with uh, certain issues in New Rochelle at the, at the outset of this. So they have been there for us all the way through this process, and we could not have accomplished it w without th this type of situation. Uh, very briefly, um, I, I received uh, two shots of Moderna, and I had the same fears that many people did. Uh, like many of us, I go on to the internet, I consult Dr. Google, who will tell me all kinds of scary things. And I talk to everybody else in my age cohort. And uh, I, I know I'm older than Mike and older than the governor and older than Andrea. So uh, you get a little scared and you say, gee, what's gonna happen to me? It's a human reaction. That's not an unrealistic situation. You fear what you don't know. However, uh, for me personally, the, the second shot reaction was, was nil. Uh, other than the standard sore arm. But the sense of confidence now to go out in the community and function rises dramatically. And it's true of everybody once they go through the vaccination cohort, whatever that is. And that is the path to the reestablishment of our economy the way we want it to be. How many of us say, I'm tired of wearing a mask? I'm tired of having to socially distance. I started out before in, in, in government, uh, I started as a sales and marketing executive. You shake hands, you pat people on the back, and you interact with them in, in a certain way. And you don't do that now because of this. The path back to normal is through vaccinations. And whatever the fears are, people are afraid, you know, what's the reaction gonna be? We've had a million plus people, many more than that in this state, who've been vaccinated with no ill effects. There's some folks who have an ideological element to it. This is not about ideology, it's about public health. And, and the fear factor and whatever other factor is there is what's blocking us from fully opening our economy. I was talking with Assemblyman Sage about the catering situation. The governor has been very careful about what gets opened and what percentage and those things. We open fully if we're fully vaccinated. And then we know we've got that confidence. So it, it's hard to express how important this opportunity is. This governor allows for more of us to get vaccinated here in Westchester County and for those in the Bronx and those in Orange and Rockland County. We don't, we don't have moats at the borders of these governments. We're one state. In fact, we're one nation. And, and together, we are going to get through this. But the vaccination is the root. So for those of you who have any vaccine, vaccine hesitancy, please, understand that this is how we get back to normal. And the faster we get back to normal, the faster we'll enjoy our lives every day. Thank you very much. Let me start off by saying thank you to our great governor for being here in Yonkers today. Governor, especially for your leadership during this uh, pandemic, it's always an honor to host you here in Yonkers. And I want to thank the, my colleagues, the Senate Majority Leader. It's always a pleasure to see the Majority Leader. Uh, Yonker is very fortunate to have the Senate Majority Leader uh, as our state senator here in our city. Uh, Senator Nader Sage, and of course, uh, my good friend Nader Sage, and of course, my good friend, the County Executive, George Latimer. You know, I'm a, a lifelong resident of Yonkers, and we all know that the past year has been hell for a lot of us. Uh, it's painful to see our community, community that we care so much about uh, suffer so greatly and um, you know now that we have the COVID vaccine there's finally light at the end of the tunnel uh, but vaccines don't stop COVID vaccinations do and that's an important point to remember you know like I said being born and raised in Yonkers and I know the governor can attest to this from where he's from 
We like to hug each other. You know, we're a hugging community. And so we can get back to hugging as soon as we can get our vaccinations. So we all know it's not just easy telling people to get vaccinated. Uh, we know that uh, there is a bit of hastency out there. There's a little bit of distrust, but uh, that all happened when the vaccines first came out. But now uh, we also know that there were barriers and the governor knows uh, about these barriers and inequities. Uh, that's why, and they've existed in our society for a long time before the pandemic. But that's why he created the Vaccine Equity Task Force. Governor, thank you for that. Uh, working with trusted community leaders to promote the safety and the effectiveness of the vaccine. And that's why he brought a mass vaccination site to us here in Yonkers with the National Guard. Thank you for your service. Uh, uh, this pop-up sites all across the state are going to do so much to get us back to a normal life. You're going to hear that over and over again. It's about us getting back to a normal life. And the way we do that is through vaccinations. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you. Say thank you to our great governor, as always. Uh, protect yourself, protect your family, uh, and um, get vaccinated. I, I did. Uh, it was um, what we needed to do. Uh, my mother got it, and uh, she's, she's a little nervous about things like that, but she, uh, she, she's 88 years old. She got through flying colors, and so uh, I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, let's get on to regular life. Wash your hands and uh, make sure you practice social distancing. Thank you very much. And, uh, it's a proud moment to join with Gov Governor Cuomo, with the Mayor of City of Yonkers, Mayor Spano, my colleague and Senate Leader, Majority Leader, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, and County Executive George Latimer. It is today a very special day for Yonkers. I'm the Assemblyman, I represent Yonkers, but the opening of this vaccination site was crucial not only for the city of Yonkers, for the entire region. Those of us that know the city, have lived in the city, understand how crucial it is when an issue like a pandemic and vaccination and individuals, old people, and people that are minorities and immigrants, people that don't know how to use the internet and technology, the difficulty they had in booking appointments was extremely detrimental. And being from a family with many healthcare professionals, many with offices and facilities right here in Southwest Yonkers, we understood the plight of many individuals. And joining with the majority leader and my colleagues at the state, local, and county levels, to send the message to the governor, to the CDC, how crucial it was to address this epicenter right here in Yonkers, New York, and to see that issue addressed with the opening is really a compliment. And today, I wanted to commend the governor for allowing this vaccination site and really for taking the lead, not only for Yonkers and Westchester, and not only for New York State, but taking the lead in the entire country. And people that I spoke to throughout America would tell me, you know, during the pandemic, we looked to the New York governor to give us guidance on what was happening and what we needed to do. So today, it's a great moment. This vaccination site had a target of 1,000 vaccines a day, and today is the 49th day and we're at 50,000 vaccinations. So to the National Guard, to our healthcare heroes, and especially to Governor Cuomo, congratulations to each and every one of us. And the mission is to continue to focus on vaccinations. It is still dangerous. We're on the right track. Get vaccinated. It's for the benefit of each and every one of us, our families, our co-workers, and society in general. Thank you very much.
Well, thank you. I think you've, you've all heard the message to the Senate Majority Leader. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, and again, congratulations on a great budget uh, for the Senate and for all their members. Assemblyman Sage, thank you very much for, for your good work. Uh, Mayor Spano, County Executive George Latimer, none of this happens without the partnership of the Mayor and the County Executive. They make everything happen. Let's give them another round of applause. You heard it. Get vaccinated for yourself, for your family, for your community. No excuses. 60 plus. You don't even need to make a phone call. Just walk up, get the vaccine at any of these sites. I'll take questions in a moment. Let me just excuse my colleagues and I'll be back. Thank you. Okay, we'll take some questions from the press. We'll have, theoretically, function in the bottom of your window. And Kelly Cummings, Director of Operation. Robert Mihika, Howard Zucker, and Kelly Cummings. Thank you, Governor. Your first question comes from Steve Brown of WGRZ. Steve, your line is now open. Please unmute your microphone. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Governor, in regards to vaccinations, um, I would like you to talk about carrots and sticks. There's been some openings in various locations, including here in Western New York, and there is a concern about whether or not the vaccination effort is stalling. So I'm wondering if your administration is considering either carrots and or sticks to incentivize greater participation. And in regards to the Corning Tower incident a couple of weeks ago, was there an investigation? If there was one, were there people punished, sanctioned, or otherwise warned? Can you just, Steve, the, do the second question again in regards to the what? Yeah, the, the Corning Tower, New York tough, uh, rearrangement of the lights, if you will. Uh, was there an investigation? If so, what were the findings of the investigation and whether or not somebody was punished for that? Yeah, I have to get back to you on the uh, Corning Tower. I don't know in truth, but uh, I'll have someone find out and get back to you today. On the, on the carrots and the sticks, look, this is, you raise an important issue. And I try to speak to it uh, often. Why is there such a variance between Western New York and the rest of the state? You have a variance among regions in the state where some regions are three times the positivity rate of other regions, four times the positivity rate of other regions. Why? One state, everybody hears the same message, Everybody has the same resources. Everybody gets the same proportionate share of vaccine. It comes down to that community's behavior. Well, you're saying uh, pointing fingers. I'm not pointing fingers. As complicated as this is, is as simple as it is. It's a virus. If you don't take precautions, you spread the virus. If you get the flu and you go home to your household and you don't take precautions, you're gonna make the whole family sick. That's COVID. If you don't take precautions, you're gonna make the whole family sick. Uh, if you don't take the vaccines, you will get sick when someone uh, who's infected uh, contacts you. So that is the message. Uh, we are not of the stick uh, approach. Uh, I don't know, I don't believe that government is going to fundamentally change human behavior. I think the better path at this point is facts about the vaccine, uh, facts about the safety of the vaccine, and access to the vaccine. Make it easier, make it easier, make it easier. 
uh, make people feel more comfortable. That's what we're doing today with the 60 plus. You don't even have to uh, make an appointment, which I think is a big deal, by the way, because I've heard a lot of people, especially older people, uh, who are not internet facile. I am not internet facile. Uh, it is a pain in the neck for me. Um, so, and I've heard that from many people. So I think, I think something like this will help. But uh, I'm more about giving people the facts, uh, urging them. I think the more time goes on. I think when they see that variance of positivity, you have to ask yourself, why? Why is it higher here than it is 50 miles away? Uh, and I believe in New Yorkers at the end of the day. And I believe in New York tough. Uh, I believe they're smart. I believe they're united. I believe they're loving. I believe they're disciplined. And uh, that's what I'm going to stick with. So, long way of saying uh, just the facts and access. That's the plan now and hopefully it works. And it has been working. Next question, operator. Governor, your next question comes from Seth Palmer of WHAM. Seth, your line is now open. Please unmute your microphone. Good afternoon, Governor. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you for taking my question. Um, my first question uh, is as better weather approaches and more outdoor festivals across the state are starting to return. Um, some of those include the Great Lilac Festival and the amazing Puerto Rican Festival in Rochester. Um, some of these outdoor festivals are being canceled or, or postponed or altered in some ways because health guidance doesn't line up uh, in favor of outdoor versus indoor festivals. Could you or Dr. Zucker uh, reassure some of the festival organizers and perhaps uh, speak to updating some of the guidance based on the science showing that being outdoors is safer than being indoors? Yeah, that is a very good question. Uh, and I'm going to ask um, Robert Mejica and Dr. Zucker to respond. Out for, let me just say, outdoors is safer than indoors. That is true. Uh, you have people now talking about, uh, well, why do we even need to, to wear a mask outdoors? Uh, as I said before, let's not get get cocky with COVID. If we do what we have to do, we do the vaccines, we're safe. As we get into the summer, I think you're going to see more progress. But the big if, I-F, okay? Uh, we've been there, done that. Uh, it's only if we do these things. Uh, so let's stay sharp, let's stay committed. Uh, but Rob, Dr. Zucker, the guidance on large gatherings, uh, in outdoors uh, areas. Can you go through that, please? Yeah, so we've been revising the, the guidance periodically. The most recent uh, revisions actually went into place, this went into effect this week. Uh, and the guidance for outside, right, has been increasing. We just did revisions for large arenas that were actually indoors. We expect to now follow that uh, over the next week with revisions to the guidance for outdoor events. Um, and we are increasing the numbers outdoors. But as you point out, you know, it, this is largely tied to the number of people that are getting vaccinated and the infection rates and the testing um, in those areas. But we are increasing the amounts but, uh, on the outdoor events. But as you point out, Governor, you know, just because it's outdoors, you still have Right, there are other restrictions in place and there are still people gathering and there's still the possibilities of infection. So it really relates to the number of people that are being, that are being vaccinated. But at the pace that we are vaccinating, if we continue along that pace, right, then those numbers can get, can, can get revised. If there's a drop off, which I think is you know, what, we're, what we're seeing, then, right, the, then it will take longer. But Dr. Okay. Zucker? I think uh, both Governor, you've covered the key issue here, which is the if uh, aspect of this and keep pushing for more vaccinations. And I think Robert covered all the, all the other aspects of this right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, operator. Governor, your next question comes from Gwen Hogan of WNYC. Gwen, your, no your line is now open. Please unmute your microphone. Hi, Governor. Thank you so much for taking my question. How are you doing? Pleasure, Gwen. How are you? 
Good. Um, I wanted to ask, um, at the end of March, a judge found that your withholding vaccines from incarcerated people violated their constitutional rights um, and, you know, rights to equal protection under the law. The judge ordered you to offer vaccines to people in prisons immediately. Um, that was three weeks ago again. Since then, the corrections department says about 900 people have received additional shots of Johnson & Johnson. Overall, I've done a calculation about 13% of people in state prisons are vaccinated compared to a much higher statewide average of about 40%. Can you explain what's taking you so long to vaccinate people in your custody in state prisons? We've reported on an outbreak currently happening among pregnant women and children at Bedford Hills Correctional Facility. Yeah, uh, Gwen, I have uh, Robert and Dr. Zucker and, and let them correct me if I'm wrong. I believe uh, what we were doing was vaccinating people in prisons at the same uh, guidelines that we were vaccinating people who were not in prisons. Uh, in other words, whatever applied to you, we would apply to people in prisons. Right, which a judge found was unconstitutional three weeks ago. Yeah, and I don't know the update uh, on that judicial decision. Do you know that, R Rob or Dr. Zucker? Um, this is you Kelly said I can, yours, I'll let yours, you know that Beth we Garvey have offered said. the vaccine to, um, so far, to all uh, incarcerated individuals that are um, 65 plus, also all individuals with comorbidities, and those second doses for incarcerated individuals with comorbidities will be finished this week. We got about 3,700 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine a few weeks ago. We have started with the general population, um, and we will continue. It has been on pause for the Johnson & Johnson, but we will continue to um, vaccinate um, the prison population at large, which Just is- Just to clarify, 000. can you hear me? So you stopped yes. the vaccine rollout because of the Johnson & Johnson pause? We stopped administering the Johnson & Johnson. But we continued Pfizer and Moderna. We stopped Johnson & Johnson everywhere because you had to. Uh, so, Kelly, let me just restate what I think you said. 65 plus was the priority, which it was in general society. Uh, then people with comorbidities, then general population. And we're now distributing to general population. Johnson & Johnson is on pause as it is uh, all across the nation. Otherwise, we're continuing with the Pfizer and the Moderna that we've received. Yes, correct. Okay, next question, operator. Governor, your next question comes from Ryan Taranelli of New York Law Journal. Ryan, your line is now open. Please unmute your microphone. Governor, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Great. Uh, if the Attorney General's report concludes that under state law you did sexually harass employees, will you resign from office, yes or no? Uh, let's see what the review says and then we'll take it from there. Well, can you please clarify exactly what that means? Will you resign from office if she concludes you did violate uh, the sexual harassment laws in the state? Yeah, let's see what the report says and then we will take it from there. It, it, it just does. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna have any comment on a review that is underway uh, beyond that. I was attorney general of the state uh, I said to everyone during a review, uh, please don't comment during the pendency of the review. Uh, let the review uh, go on at the appropriate time. I will have a comment uh, about the review uh, and about the facts uh, and about the truth. Uh, so, and I'm looking forward to that, uh, but now is not the time. Let's take one more operator. Governor, your next question comes from Peter Haskell of WCBS 880. Peter, your line is now open. Please unmute your microphone. Hey, Governor. Hey, Peter. So you said some time ago that you never meant to make women feel uncomfortable. You've said that you're huggy by nature. I'm curious if since then you've changed your behavior or you feel it's necessary that you should do that when you greet people professionally? Uh, 
I'll give you the same answer, Peter. Uh, you have, you've watched me in public for uh, many, many years, right? Uh, so you know how I behave. The people of New York know how I behave. They've, they've seen it. They've watched it. They've watched it on a daily basis. Uh, go on the web, look at all the photographs. Uh, but uh, let's see what the review says. The Assembly's doing a review. The Attorney General's doing a review. Uh, I'll then tell you what I think, uh, and then we'll go from there. But I'm not asking about the review. I'm just asking about your personal decisions, the way you treat people when you see them now. Uh, well, uh, now we are in a COVID situation. <laughs> so social distancing and, and masks, uh, you just heard Mayor Spano, I don't know if you were on the, uh, uh, heard the comments. Mayor Spano uh, just said uh, that we are accustomed, get the vaccine so we can get back to life as normal. Mayor Spano just said, you know, uh, I know like the governor, uh, we're from cultures where we like to hug each other, et cetera, and embrace. George Latimer, the county executive, said he used to be in sales. He used to handshake and uh, put a pat on the back. Uh, none of that happens during COVID. So their point was both, let's get back to normal, uh, where you can handshake and not bump and hug, et cetera. Uh, so uh, we're in a different time now. Okay, thank you all very much.